like 15 minutes uh, to hear the satellite while it overpasses your uh, location. And in order to listen to uh, satellites, uh, we use ground stations. Um, as you can see in the, in the picture, we, uh, this is a big and scary one. Uh, it's, from, uh, European, uh, it's one from the European Space Agency. Um, but ground stations can be down to uh, uh, hobbies, ground stations, and those that use ham operators. And uh, a ground station is basically uh, an antenna, mounted, uh, antennas mounted, mounted on top of um, a rotator and the rotator can help us move the antennas and uh, point to uh, an, uh, a position in the sky and track that object and also listen to the, spe the frequency that these object um, uh, transmit signals. Um, as you can see in the, in the picture, uh, ground stations can be super expensive and also they might be heavily regulated in some cases. So in order to tackle the problem that we're facing is that we initially wanted to have uh, an open source uh, reference design that is going to be cheap enough and it's going to use materials that anyone can source and uh, practically we wanted uh, anyone with some basic knowledge to be able to build a ground station. Um, but that is the first uh, part that we need to solve. Uh, the most interesting part for us is that uh, due to the sort of repassing window that you have to communicate with satellites, uh, you, the communication cannot be synchronous. You have to be, it has to be async. Um, and that's what we also want to tackle, the global coverage. So the idea is to create a network, uh, which sounds easy, right? And the initial design looks something like this in the chart. We want it everyone uh, interested in satellites to be able to have access to a global management network that uh, can handle uh, observation tasks. Uh, anyone with that kind of access could uh, tell which uh, satellite he, he wants to track and using our, our network we, uh, it, it is a, he's able to um, send tasks to ground stations distributed around the world and then listen to satellites and then the data get posted back to the network so anyone can reach it. Uh, when we came up with the initial architecture, um, we found out that there was no unified way to do this. So we decided to do everything from scratch. Um, but this sounds difficult. So uh, we want this to be as modular as we can. Uh, so we can use existing components and an existing technology to solve the initial problem. Um, so let's dive into, the, into our stack. First comes the rotator. Um, as you can see the picture, this is our uh, third iteration of our design. Um, practically, a rotator is a mechanical device that enables antennas and uh, that enables antennas to move on azimuth and altitude dimensions. And uh, this is our uh, last design, and we wanted this to be. Uh, easily uh, uh, built. Uh, we wanted this to be 3D printed, so any hackerspace with prototyping tools uh, could build it. And we also wanted this to be cheap, so everyone can have access to it. And on top of that, we didn't want to, uh, to create something that has uh, worse specs than what other rotators have in the market. So our rotator, uh, our design uh, was initially uh, to be uh, as reliable as the rest of the operators in the market. Um, here's the picture of our, our previous version. This is V2 Satnox. Um, this is the deployment that we are we have in uh, Hagia Space in Athens. Uh, it's mounted with uh, a helical uh, UHF antenna, and uh, we have already uh, been using that for some time. For the receiving part, we are using everyone's favorite DVBT. Um, the off-the-shelf solution caused some instabilities, uh, so we specifically we had some problems with the PPM errors. So we decided to go with the modded ones, as you can find in the market, and uh, with the patched uh, oscillator, so you can have more stable uh, product. A ground station can be permanent and portable, uh, and we have designs for both. We want uh, both permanent and portable deployments. 
Um, so uh, we provide designs for a tripod, uh, so anyone one can have a portable design. But for those that want uh, a more uh, permanent setup, we also have designs for a dome, uh, which is optional, uh, but is uh, very useful in some cases uh, with extreme weather conditions. Um, but yeah. So the, the, the most critical part, our center uh, part of our design, uh, is the network. Um, the network is where all the data get gathered and when uh, someone wants to track a satellite, he just has access to it and then submit uh, at, uh, an observation job uh, which gets populated to the distributed network of ground stations. Um, we wanted this to be as open uh, as possible because uh, we strongly believe in open data and we want our, uh, our observations to be accessible by anyone who wants to do experiments or uh, use it for any other project. Um, so here is a, uh, here's a uh, screencast from uh, our uh, network. Here you can see a list of observations already submitted and we are about to, um, to do a new observation. We select the satellite, for this case, FineCube, and we also select which transceiver that we want to listen to. And also we want to, we also define the start and end of the observation time. Here you can see we can fine tune it. And then we tell the network to give us uh, an observation, uh, uh, to schedule observations uh, in our network. If that doesn't work, we can change the, the time frame and fine tune it once again. And then if that fits, uh, we schedule the observation. Okay, so even if we have a scheduler for our ground stations, we need some software to run on the ground station side. Um, this is Satmux client. Uh, we have built it uh, in order to uh, facilitate the needs of the, the, the computing needs of the, of the ground station. Um, so when uh, an observation gets scheduled, uh, ground stations pull the network and get uh, the jobs that are assigned to each one. And when the time comes, it, the, 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 the Satmux client tells the ground station to start tracking and also uh, moves the rotator and uh, tunes the radio for a specific frequency and also calculates Doppler shift. And uh, for the time frame that the schedule lasts, uh, it records what the satellites uh, transmit. Um, and also, uh, when the observation ends, it sends, sends back all the data to the network. Uh, Satnus client is built using Python. Uh, basically, uh, the team that started this project was uh, comfortable with this language and also was a good fit. So every, everything is based on Python. And we are trying to uh, use existing protocols because we believe interoperability is the uh, key point for what we're doing. So uh, what we're doing at this point is using road control and rig control. Um, road control is a protocol that enables us to Con con uh, connect with a rotator and send commands in order to move it. And rig control is the protocol that helps us uh, connect with the radio and change the frequency, which is really useful for Doppler shift calculations. And also, we didn't want to build uh, the software that does the um, software-defined radio from scratch, so we, because it was practically impossible. So we. Uh, we use existing software uh, as uh, such as RTLSDR and Multimone, and we also use uh, ODG for the encoding. And our design was initially uh, built in order to not just to facilitate our needs, but also use the client with other rotators and other deployments that are out there. So uh, we wanted this to be as modular as it can be and as interoperable as it can be because. Uh, we believe that there are many setups out there that are not that, that are underused and they and they are idle for a long time. So we wanted this in the network as well. An interesting issue that we encountered was that there was no source to get uh, transceiver data, and by transceiver data, I mean uh, information about uh, satellite uh, frequency and modulation and baud rate, and 
a description of how the, of the, how the satellite transmits signals. Um, so we decided to uh, use some community help and we built SatNoxDB. Um, SatNoxDB is a crowdsourced uh, satellite transceiver database that aggregates uh, information about uh, transceiver data and has a more formal way to, um, to present it. It's built on top of Django and we provide a public API for that. Uh, in a typical manner because we believe that these data are useful for other people and other projects as well. So through the public API, anyone can get uh, um, satellite transceiver data. And uh, the reason that we believe that this was useful is that many community members were already, gather were already gathering that kind of data uh, in blogs and in web pages, but there was no way to have a central uh, API or a representation in order to get uh, more programmatically um, this kind of data. So the reason th this was really helpful from the community and we believe that this is successful because many people have already submitted uh, their information and, and it is already been used by um, other uh, satellite enthusiasts. So overall, uh, our stack looks like this. Um, you can see in the right, we have different combinations of antennas. Uh, for example, you can use uh, UHF, VHF, um, Yagi, or Helico, uh, and whatever you actually want, uh, practically. Uh, and you can mount it on top of Satnox uh, in a reference design, but we make, it, uh, we make it easy for everyone to use their rotators as well. So anyone with a commercial rotator that supports our pro the protocol that we're using can use their rotator in our network. Um, so on the ground station side, you can use any embedded device you want and run the software like Odroid or Bicklebone Black. Um, and we, 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 we have made it this way that we enable it to, for anyone to use whatever computing device they have in order to use the ground station. And on top of that, we have the software. Uh, we've built Satnox client, which is the part that moves the rotator and tunes the frequency, but there are many co commercial software there that we as a community, community don't uh, necessarily support, but you can use it. And there are also the open source alternatives like Gpredict and GQRX. Um, that you can use. Uh, actually, Gpredict is the equivalent of the rotator movement, and GQRX is the, um, the software that uh, connects to the um, radio. Uh, finally, you can either use the ground station like standalone offline, uh, or you can be part of the global network and, re and use it through the global management uh, website that we have or, and return data back, but you can, you can also use it offline. As everyone understands, uh, this is really complicated for a small team to build, so this wouldn't be possible to achieve without the help for the community. Um, here you can see some pictures of ground stations being built uh, around the world. We have already uh, four uh, already built and uh, connected to the network, and we, uh, at the moment we have information that people are building it and send us um, uh, the kind of pictures. Um, so through mingling with the open space enthusiasts all around the world, it was clear that just satellite communication is not enough to advance our open source ideals. So we decided to create Librespace Foundation. Librespace Foundation is a non-profit uh, uh, initiative that uh, we are aiming to advance Libre and open source space projects uh, through, that, um, through this foundation. We already have some satellite-specific uh, open source projects in the works, but we want more people to contribute to it, and we want to reach out to more satellite enthusiasts so we can collaborate on other projects. We've uh, had some huge milestones by now. We have a working uh, rotator, and the network works, and pretty much all the stack is in a working uh, state, and uh, we have some next steps uh, so far. We want, this, we want to uh, add more ground stations in our network. We want to extend the coverage that we have, and we want 
uh, more people to be able to use their um, rotators. And except of receiving, we are also planning to have transmitting capabilities. Um, and lastly, we want to increase interoperability with existing systems. We know that there are many rotators and many setups out there that they are like academic uh, projects and they're in an idle state. So we want them to, reuse, to, reuse, uh, to use our network and reuse the av available equipment. So we need you. Uh, all this project could not be possible without volunteers like us. So we are still looking for more people to join our project. Um, our stack is huge and we are looking for contributors from different backgrounds. So we need mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and the RF experts. And practically anyone with an interest on in space can reach out to us and uh, see if there's something interesting to do. Thank you. Um, you can check satnox.org for more info and you can also reach out to us in the Space Village when we have a, a Satnox deployment uh, live. And for more information, you can check out the community forum where is the discussion going on and our GitHub page uh, where all the projects are there and they are documented. And for the deployment, you can see this, you can go to this URL, URL network.satnox.org and use our network. Thank you. Questions? Wow, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Please come to the two microphones. Are there any questions? No? I don't get it. Yeah, please come to the microphone. Uh, no, please to the microphone, or the microphone goes to you, um, because it is recorded and the microphone has a cable. Um, uh, can I hear you? Microphone, uh, audio, guide, Angel. Testing. Oh, hello. Um, hi, I was just wondering, what's the average cost of a deployment? Um, right now, it's something like 500, 300 to 500 uh, euros, depending on which equipment you have available. Thanks. Next one, please. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to ask, I didn't understand the model of uh, the flow of information. So do you request as a user so that other ground stations may track a satellite or do you submit what you just collected on your own? No, you, uh, the idea is that we want users to um, define which time window they want to observe a satellite and then use the ground stations available in our network that are connected to the network in order to schedule that and return the data back to the user. Ah, thank you. Uh, can Go you ahead. share with us uh, some use cases? Uh, I know that there are uh, weather satellites and other stuff, some interesting hockey, uh, use cases of... of yeah, the, so the first problem. of all, there is the initial need to uh, communicate with the satellite. Um, there, are, there are many amateur satellites there and also, people, they're launching CubeSats, and communicating with satellites right now is super expensive. And we wanted this to be available in an open way. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I know, but uh, what kind of data we can expect in that kind of communication? Was the, uh, of course, from uh, weather uh, satellites we... Yeah, so, we... so, so basically, uh, the two main categories are status beacons, when you actually get the satellite status, uh, and also you can uh, get back the data from an experiment, let's say. So you, have, so you need a way to run an experiment in a satellite and then you need a way to uh, get that data back. So the satellite can uh, transmit the results of it and you can receive it on with using Satnox. Are there any more questions? Um, so what's the observable bandwidth and um, what kind of signals or what kind of data do you get out of that? Is that demodulated stuff or is it... Sorry? Uh, what kind of data, what kind of samples do you get? Do you get raw IQ and uh, uh, also how, how broad is the observed bandwidth? Yeah, so getting a raw IQ could be 
really big for the bandwidth that we have right now uh, in terms of network. So what we provide is either the, what we are planning to provide is right now we are only providing uh, ODG uh, output like sound, and we are also uh, aiming to be able to demodulate stuff on the ground station side. So it's going to be something uh, like binary. Um, yeah, you said audio, but there's I, I'm I'm not a ham. I'm I'm more a software defined radio guy. So um, audio. What, what does audio imply here? Because there's RF wave coming in and not audio waves. I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Um, you don't receive audio, you receive RF. So what kind yeah. of modulation is that that maps? Uh, it's, uh, actually, it's only a fre frequency modulation, FM. And then that gets goaded to uh, Ah, so, audio. OK. That explains the AUK encoder. Ah, OK. Um, so there's no chance to get the raw signal that you receive right now? Uh, right now, no. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Someone else is curious? Great. Come to the microphone. Hi. Can you say something about the lifetime of the satellites currently? And secondly, uh, who is uh, taking, who is in charge of uh, coordination, uh, like orbital control and coordination with uh, commercial stuff up there? Um, I didn't hear the question. Could you please repeat it? The, the lifetime, what's the lifetime of this satellite so far? And secondly, uh, who is coordinating um, with other satellites out there? Um, so about the first one, I'm not sure what's the lifetime of a satellite. But uh, right now, we are trying to uh, get in touch with other uh, satellite enthusiasts in order to define some standards on how to cooperate with the, with the rest of the, those interested. So. Um, there's not something formal right now. Uh, we are trying. We are trying to reach out to other people interested. I'm not sure I, I got the question right. Yeah, like what's what's the uh, usable? Uh, like, how long can they operate? Basically, you know, a cube, a satellite. Uh, I'm not sure what's the. What was it the time until uh, it goes uh, out of orbit? I'm mm, not sure. Depends on the experiment. Mm. Well, the second question was about the coordination, the, the orbital control, and like how how is that handled with the commercial satellites? Um, I have no idea about commercial uh, satellites. Uh, the no, I mean they use the, the same space basically. That's what I'm trying oh. to get at. I'm not sure I get the question, sorry. Uh, we can uh, discuss it after the sure. presentation. Are there any more questions? OK, thank you very much. Give him a warm applause for this interesting talk. Yeah.